The United Nations, headquartered in New York City, came into existence on the 24th of October 1945, when the UN Charter was ratified by what we now know as the P5, China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, the United States, along with a majority of other signatories. Currently made up of 193 member states, the UN takes action on issues confronting humanity, such as peace, security, climate change, humanitarian emergencies, and more, through the powers vested in the organization through its charter. Here in Western Australia, the United Nations Association of Australia, WA, is dedicated to informing, inspiring, and engaging the West Australian community and leaders regarding the work, goals, and values of the United Nations to create a safer, fairer, and more sustainable world. Established in 1946, the West Australian Division of the UNAA is run solely by a small group of passionate and committed volunteers with committees focusing on education, environment, human rights and gender equality. Each of our committees run a comprehensive suite of events and public engagements ranging from panel discussions through to art exhibitions. Our committees are also actively engaged with tomorrow's leaders throughout WA. Through primary and secondary schools, our committees run many youth-focused outreach events, student parliament and awards. The UNAAWA also has a strong focus on promoting sustainability, tackling the issues through the SDG Business Forum. These forums run multiple times a year, showcases the impact of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on Western Australian businesses and organisations. The SDGs are a collection of 17 global goals set by the United Nations General Assembly for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This year, we celebrate 75 years of the United Nations, and the UNAAWA is proud to connect Western Australians with the United Nations in order to promote justice, peace, security, and sustainable development for present and future generations. Wanare kan walana, wanare kan walana. Poyongara wadingo, poyongara wadingo. Wanare kan walana, poyongara. One One day, one man, one man, one Baraka Buja, Demanga, Mamanga Buja. Hello and welcome, welcome to Wajak country, lands of my grandmothers and my grandfathers. Our country, my country, your country. Baraka Jenaga Neche Balaba, Wangi, Nunukba, Ni, Wa, Baraka Wangi. So I'm proud to actually be standing here, speaking to you as you are seated or standing and listening to what I am saying. Yang ngalak aja nengen di cebala pa, cebala pa, curap penjua, nono kabur curap, nono court merdej, kabar aja, toga aja, merdej, wah, so it makes my heart and my stomach strong and proud to be standing here, carrying on customs that have actually been here since the beginning of time. Michael Moller, Danish former Under Secretary General of the United Nations and the 12th Director General of the United Nations Office at Geneva,
Ambassador Pamela Hamamoto, previous ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva and current member of the Global Leadership Council of the United Nations Foundation. Dr. Sandy Chong, President of the United Nations Association of Australia in Western Australia. Miss Grace Forrest, United Nations Association of Australia Goodwill Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honour this year to have a number of highly respected and accomplished VIPs joining us to mark United Nations Day 2020 and markedly the 75th anniversary. My name is Nisha Seth, United Nations Association of Australia Young Professionals President here in Western Australia, and it is a privilege to be your MC for both our virtual and physical United Nations Day events in 2020. As we approach the 75th anniversary of the UN Charter's signing, there is much work to be done in our current global climate. We can leverage the insights from our VIPs to inspire our future trajectory, to build our spiritual, human, social and intellectual capital to collectively turn our challenges into opportunities. Thank you for joining us. We are very excited to have you. Each year, the UN Day highlights the enduring ideals of the UN Charter and the importance of peace. The theme for this year is shaping peace together. This could not be a more appropriate theme because more than ever, it has been clear that our common enemy is not each other, but a virus that threatens our health, security, economies and way of life. COVID-19 has revealed in stark contrast the inequalities that exist within and between our societies and has shown us that what happens in one region of the globe can affect people everywhere. It is a critical reminder that global challenges require global solutions and that it is past time we lay down our weapons and focus on combating this global pandemic together. The original plan for the 75th anniversary of the United Nations this year was for it to be a year of renewal, a year of listening and learning. To mark its anniversary, the UN has invited millions of people around the world to have a global conversation on how to build the peaceful and prosperous future that we want. The results so far show that there is an overwhelming support for countries to work together on managing global trends. There is a global desire for cooperation across borders, sectors and generations. Responses also show that people believe climate and environment will most affect humanity's future. So as we struggle to defeat COVID-19, your voice is most important. And let's dedicate this day to fostering dialogue and collecting your ideas. You all have a role to play in sharing your thoughts on how to overcome this challenge and heal our planet. And of course, change our world for the better. Please celebrate today by spreading compassion, kindness and hope and stand together with the UN against attempts to use the virus to promote discrimination and hatred. Together, we can shape a better and more peaceful world. Hi everyone, it's wonderful to be joining you for this UNAA virtual event. 2020 has made it clear that now more than ever, we must be laser focused on achieving the sustainable development goals together. This month, Walk Free launched a new report, Stacked Odds, the most comprehensive assessment of the female experience of slavery to date. Shockingly, the report found one in every 130 women in the world is living in conditions of modern slavery and exploitation. Centuries on from the abolition of slavery, sexism, racism and inequality are still roadblocks to sustainable development for millions of people, especially women, around the world. Although 2020 has been devastating, 2020 is not the problem. This year has uncovered so much of what we have previously tried to ignore and now can't. Even before COVID, we were not on track to reach the SDGs by 2030. In July 2019, we estimated that we would need to free 10,000 people a day from now to 2030 in order to meet the UN's deadline. And this was before the world was hit by a global pandemic, which has set back our progress on modern slavery and so many of the global goals even further. However, this pandemic has given us the opportunity to pause and reassess whether we want to continue on our current trajectory, an opportunity to build back systems better. 
We are at a time when the world is awakening to ongoing injustices, questioning historical inequalities and confronting unprecedented crises. We are realising that we are all responsible for correcting past crimes against humanity, both in Australia and abroad, but also that large scale systemic change is possible. For my team at Walk Free and I, this looks like working against all legal roadblocks that prevent women and girls from fully and freely participating. Only 51 countries have legislated against force and child marriage, leaving 133 falling short. It's time every leader stepped up to protect all its people and not just the people at the top. It is critical to empower survivors. Amplifying survivor voices is foundational for the fight against modern slavery and is necessary to breaking down systemic inequality. It is not enough to just share survivor stories. Their voices must be present and amplified in the rooms where decisions are being made. The UN and other global institutions are crucial to facilitating international cooperation and investment in human rights globally. We must work towards eliminating institutionalised gender inequality, working within communities to change harmful and gender biased attitudes. We cannot progress as a society when so many of us are systemically held back. Together, we can make this difference. Thank you. Hello everyone and greetings from San Francisco. I'm currently not far from the spot the United Nations Charter was originally signed and I'm honored to be included in your celebration of the UN's 75th anniversary today. I was also honored to serve as ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva under President Obama and was grateful for his strong commitment to multilateral diplomacy and his desire to work closely with partners and allies for the greater good. I had the pleasure of working with Australian ambassadors, Peter Wolcott and John Quinn, who were important partners of mine on many critical issues throughout my time in Geneva. Geneva serves as the operational hub of the UN system, home base for so many important international organizations and a true melting pot of diplomats from all over the world. We engage daily on a broad array of issues, ranging from human rights to climate change, to intellectual property protection, to refugees and migration, to trade and development, to peace and security. It quickly became apparent that issues surrounding women and girls cut across all of this work just like SDG 5 cuts across all the global goals. I felt we were only going to successfully move the needle on gender equality if we joined forces and pooled our expertise, resources, and political will. So I did just that. I joined forces with former UNOG Director General Michael Moeller, and in 2015, we launched International Gender Champions. We had a bold vision to build a powerful network of global leaders asking each one to make meaningful personal commitments to drive action toward gender equality and to hold each other accountable. Earlier this summer, we celebrated the fifth anniversary of IGC, and we're so thrilled that the initiative has far exceeded our expectations. We currently have more than 250 gender champions spread across six hubs and more than 150 alumni champions spread throughout the world. Our champions have delivered on more than 1,000 commitments that have changed mindsets, policies, and behavior related to organizational culture, leadership, governance, and work-life balance. Our impact groups have leveraged the technical expertise, diverse perspectives, and broad reach of our champions to achieve groundbreaking achievements in trade, representation, disarmament, and justice. Our Panel Parity Pledge has made the notion of single-sex panels unacceptable across our network. And we've shown that supporting women does not come at the expense of men. It's not a zero-sum game, but rather a blueprint for more inclusive, equitable, profitable, safe, and secure societies. As a result, we all had high expectations for 2020. Instead, women are being disproportionately affected by the coronavirus pandemic, and in many countries, we're seeing increased pressure on gender equality and a renewed pushback against women's rights. The global disruption from COVID-19 has led to greater economic and social discrimination, deepening inequalities and widespread attacks on UN and multilateral institutions. Fortunately, IGC continues to expand and its leaders are rising to the challenge and helping shape the global response to COVID-19, deepening impact, demanding new frameworks and keeping gender equality on top of the international agenda. 
IGC offers an agile and powerful platform for leaders to ensure we emerge stronger from this crisis. Women have long been key change agents in their communities, and we need them to play a key role in rebuilding our post-COVID world. I believe it was Winston Churchill who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Well, hopefully this is an opportunity to permanently shift norms and to accelerate progress for women by bringing a gender lens to all aspects of our work. Now more than ever, we need organizations like yours to continue to shine a spotlight on the work of the United Nations. Your efforts encourage local, state, and national governments to focus on vulnerable populations that continue to suffer widespread injustices around the world. And we need passionate and committed volunteers to help drive support for UN programs and institutions, to inspire a renewed commitment to all of the SDGs, and to reinforce the UN's founding principles which sought to incorporate the needs, perspectives, and hopes of all people for a safer, more equitable, and more sustainable world. Thank you for all you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a great pleasure and privilege to be with you today to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. Although I would have much preferred to be with you in person, of course. Thank you, first of all, to my good friend, Jürgen Baumhof, member of the Executive Committee of the United Nations Association of Western Australia, for inviting me to join you on this very special day. As former Director General of the United Nations Office here in Geneva, I congratulate and warmly thank the UN Association of Western Australia and its President, Dr. Sandy Chong, not just for bringing us together today, but for everything you and your team are doing, your engagement and activism, your dedication and commitment to the cause of multilateralism, and particularly to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, our global roadmap. Efforts that are now more needed than ever. You don't need me to tell you that we are living in a really troubled world. Words such as unprecedented or historic feature in almost every other sentence we hear or read. Not without reason, of course. COVID-19 has indeed revealed, and in many cases reinforced, the dramatic failures of our societies long ignored environmental crisis, economic inequalities, geopolitical fragmentation, political ineptitude, social disruption. All of this and more has been brought into painful focus by the global pandemic. Separated and isolated from one another, it's easy to feel despair. And yet, despite all of this, and perhaps for some counterintuitively, I want to sound a counter note of optimism. Not naive feel-goodery, or tone-deaf hopefulness, but optimism rooted in experience and based on fact. The experience of the past 75 years and the fact of the progress they engendered. Before the pandemic struck, I often asked people the following. If you could choose any moment in history in which to be born, and you did not know whether you were going to be male or female, which country you were going to be from, or what your status would be, which time would you choose? Well. I'm convinced that you would have a hard time justifying choosing anything other than the present. Because if you choose today, you would be less likely to be living in poverty, less likely to be illiterate, less likely to confront intolerance and oppression, and less likely to be killed in a war than at any other time in human history. All of this progress is a relatively recent phenomenon, and it is no accident that it coincided with the establishment of a multilateral global structure with the United Nations and its partners at its heart. There is a direct correlation here. It is multilateral action that diminished poverty, that defeated smallpox and many other diseases, that increased educational levels, that diffused conflicts and brought the world together, that gave us levels of peace, rights and well-being never experienced before by humankind. But now, as we see entire regions set back years in a matter of few months by the pandemic, as millions of people may be pushed into extreme poverty, does all of that still hold true? I am convinced that it does. If anything, COVID-19 reinforces the imperative need for renewed and more effective multilateralism. This crisis is not a failure of the notion of multilateralism. The temporary nature of our governance systems we are living right now lies in the absence of multilateral actions defined by an increase in nationalistic, inward-looking, defensive postures. The operative word here is temporary, because we simply have no choice but to revert 
to international cooperation and solidarity if we want to ensure a healthy future for our planet. As we look ahead to building forward better, to coming out of this stronger, we do well to remember the lessons of the past. Not everything has to be reinvented. Rather, it has to be reinforced and reapplied. Because here's the important point. We have the tools, the resources, and the instruments we need to overcome the current existential challenges, whether in health, climate, development, corruption, armaments, finance, etc. We just need to strengthen our collective will. And with the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, we have an enduring and unifying vision, a framework to guide our decisions and actions as we look to respond and recover. From the awakening that this crisis is triggering, we have a chance to create an inclusive, networked, more collaborative and effective multilateralism in which everyone can and must play an active part. The difference between the SDGs slipping out of reach or becoming a tangible and impactful reality, that difference is you. It is all of us. I have looked at your program, your commitments, your work, and I'm happily reinforced in my conviction that it is organizations like yours who, by living the values and objectives of the United Nations every day, by staying actively engaged, by spreading the word, by taking responsibility, by connecting across geographies, are making a crucial difference. Together, and only together, can we turn this around and ensure that we leave no one behind. I am encouraged and very grateful that we can count you on the side of all of us who strive to make our world a better and more sustainable place for our children. Thank you again, and my very best wishes to all of you in Western Australia for the future we want. Thank you. The purpose of the United Nations Association of WA is to connect Western Australians with the United Nations in order to promote justice, peace, security and sustainable development for present and future generations. A critical element of this mission is to recognise the related achievements of members of our community and to hold them up as role models to be emulated by all Australians. The United Nations Association of Australia WA Awards recognise outstanding achievements by individuals, community members and organisations in Western Australia that have made significant contribution to furthering the United Nations. Hello everyone, my name is Darshana and I am from the UNAA WA Human Rights Committee. And today I get to present an award to someone very special. Awards give us an opportunity to celebrate the best of us, amplifying our ability to surpass implied limits. It is especially uplifting when one does this to aid the human rights of the most vulnerable. Understanding what human rights encompasses is often obscured by the fortunate way of life we have, particularly here in WA. This allows us to push the definition of basic human rights to higher levels as society advances. This year, however, on a global scale, our basic human rights have been affected deeply. Maslow's hierarchy begins with physiological and safety needs, both of which have had an unfathomable blow. In spite of this, WA has had the opportunity to seal ourselves away from the world, offering us the prospect of recovering those basic human rights. Our award winner today has been doing great work repairing those exact rights for our most precious assets our children. She has been working tirelessly to provide a magic coat, a tool that helps children focus when life bridles them with worry. Altruism at its peak, Di Wilcox exhibits the kind of commitment we applaud. Di created the Magic Coat program, which is now used widely and continually evolves to meet the various needs of children, including those with special needs, and has been incorporated into a preventative mental health program. For her work with Magic Coat, we would like to present the United Nations Association of Australia WA Human Rights Award for the year 2020 to Di Wilcox. So to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I'm the mother of two daughters myself and I was a primary school teacher for a really long period of time. Um, and I have a Bachelor of Social Science in Women and Children's Studies because women and children are another passion of mine. And uh, while I was teaching, I just saw a real need to help our children with their social and emotional well-being. 
And that's when I, I got on the path of creating the Magic Coat, which um, is evolving and, and growing as we speak. So very excited about it. I love what the UN does. Its work is so important because it's shining a light on those issues that we don't always think about, but they're necessary for all of us to be aware of. And I think the fact that mental health is becoming one of those important issues and the UN is shining a light on that, um, I'm thrilled to pieces about that. I'm so excited about getting this award. I had no idea that I'd been nominated. So when I got the phone call, I was a little bit shocked, but um, thrilled to bits and, and really, really proud to have recognition from uh, the United Nations Association. So thank you so much. The United Nations Association of Australia Young Professionals is very pleased and thankful to be included in this year's UN Day Awards again. The Young Professionals aims to work with the 25 to 35 year old age cohort to provide mentoring, networking and professional development opportunities across the country. We have executives in every state and territory. This year's award once again focuses on identifying young professionals that have demonstrated experience and achievement relating to one or more of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Importantly, outstanding contribution to inspire a culture of achievement and improvement for those around them. Contributing and giving back to their community, really embodying the spirit of volunteerism, and finally, exemplary leadership and mentoring for others to succeed. This year, we had many successful um, nominees. Um, however, unfortunately, there can only be one winner. And we have a very, very successful winner here and very pleased to announce this year, it's Ms. Monica Antoshevska. Currently an analyst at the Human Capital Team at Deloitte Australia, a board director of UN Youth Australia, and a strong history in volunteering, Monica strives to provide young people with meaningful opportunities. She has recently volunteered at 180 Degrees Consulting WA, which is a student-run consulting organisation. She has held various roles during her time volunteering with the student-run consulting organisation, including consultant, team lead, and mentored a number of different students during her time there. She is also in her role at 180DC, uh, worked with four consultants particularly to deliver a HR strategy to help the NFP client meet their governance and needs to support their national expansion. Monica's passion and contributions align most strongly with the UN SDG quality of education. Monica describes her purpose as providing young people with meaningful opportunities to learn, share, collaborate and grow. Through her involvement as an independent board director at UN Youth Australia, Australia's largest entirely youth-run not-for-profit organisation, she has had the opportunity to reach thousands of young Australians. In addition to serving on the board, Monica also sits um, on the HR and welfare committees and personally mentors three executive members. Very impressive, Monica also has been engaged by the University of Western Australia teaching over 700 students across a variety of first year to final year management, human resource management and employee relations units. I would now like to welcome Monica to the stage, a very worthy recipient for 2020. Please join me. So to introduce myself, my name is Monica. Uh, part of the work that I do, so in my professional career, I'm an analyst in the human capital team at Deloitte Australia. The reason that I love working with uh, UN Youth Australia and the United Nations as a whole is it's just absolutely incredible the programs and educational opportunities they provide to young people to actually help empower and educate them. The transformations I've seen of young people involved in that organisation is so incredibly inspiring. And I truly believe that it sort of creates a ripple effect as they work with other young people who are new to UN Youth and it kind of ripples out through the community that you have this amazing group of just young activists who have a voice and um, feel really confident with that, which really means a lot to me. I'm a little bit shocked to be honest, but I'm really, really grateful. This does mean a lot to me. Um, I think the work that I do is something I'm really passionate about. Um, and I hope that this award can show other young people the effect that you can have in your community by giving back. Um, so if anything, that's what I am feeling right now, that I hope it inspires other people as well. The UN World Teachers Day Awards are presented to teachers recognising the role that they play in advancing global citizenship 
thinking globally, acting locally. It's my pleasure this year to present the 2020 Primary Award to Rachel Roberts at Hillcrest Primary School for the sustainability programs that inspire our children to care for the planet. And Rachel shares her passion with teachers statewide, showing how sustainability savings can be used to fund coordinated positions. Congratulations, Rachel. Thank you very much. Well done. Uh, sustainability education is a passion of mine. It is something that I try and spread as widely as I can, mainly because it is so much fun working with children. Every single day they come in and say, well, what are we doing today? And there are so many things you can do. Um, but one of the biggest um, things I've been trying to do with other schools is encourage administrators to give time to sustainability teaching. So uh, half a day a week would be um, excellent in a school and that will really get the program off the ground and will also um, result in savings for the school. So we've had tens of thousands of dollars of savings from having a sustainability teacher with paid time to focus on introducing the programs. Fantastic. The United Nations Association Western Australia Environment Committee is a group of passionate sustainability advocates that meets monthly to discuss issues relevant to the Western Australian environment and community. We come from a variety of professional backgrounds, each committed to conserving and protecting the environment. Our committee is uniquely placed to champion and increase awareness around the sustainable development goals, in particular, those relating to the environment. We do this through a range of activities, including innovative programs, projects and events, educational forums, professional knowledge sharing and networking, and through partnering with like-minded organisations. The Environmental Action Award recognises individuals and organisations in Western Australia whose outstanding achievements have significantly contributed to the environment in line with the United Nations Sustain Sustainable Development Goals. Key criteria for this year's Environmental Award Action, Action Award are giving back to the community, spirit of volunteerism, exemplary leadership and mentoring of others, outstanding contribution to the protection and restoration of the natural environment, increasing the awareness of current and emerging environmental issues and aligning activities with the Sustainable Development Goals. It was not an easy process we had a number of exceptional nominations this year. And the winner of this year's Environmental Action Award is Millennium Kids Inc. I'm Alan Johnstone and I'm on the board for Millennium Kids. And I'm Heather Johnstone and I'm um, part of the council for Millennium Kids and also a, a mentor for kids as well. Um, environmental work, things like revegetating spots and doing cleanups on the ocean or at the beach. <laughs> so the things that makes Millennium Kids different is the kids decide which projects to progress. So they really lead the projects and decide what's important to them. So my project is revegetating really something to a, a park for um, different types of birds and native animals. So yeah, this is a, a drainage basin that obviously doesn't have much trees and. We don't have many parks near that area as well, so yeah, that's what Owen's passionate about. We try to incorporate the sustainable development goals into our projects. I think everybody will be really happy to see that we've won. We'll probably just all get some chocolate to eat because one of the rules of all the kids is, have, is eat chocolate. Good evening, my name is Hannah Brown and I am the Chair of the UNAA WA Gender Equality Committee. The Gender Equality Committee was established in early 2015 to provide a forum for discussion and to organise events concerning women's rights, gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls both in Australia and internationally. By as young as age four, children begin to display gender stereotyping, separating girls and boys on the basis of strength and power. During childhood, many young girls are denied access to education and others are subject to gender-based violence. 
and in adulthood, most women, unfortunately, will experience some form of discrimination based on pregnancy or their caring duties. Gender equality proposes that men and women deserve equal access to rights, opportunities and outcomes, regardless of gender. And unfortunately, gender equality is far from reality here in WA. This is evidenced by our gender pay gap sitting at 22%, the highest in Australia. And ABS data shows us that men working full time in WA earn on average $450 more per week than women also working full time in WA. Gender equality has a flow on effect for all aspects of sustainability. When we fail to adopt a balanced approach to complex global challenges, we deny our collective impact. The Gender Equality Promotion Award celebrates the proactive work of local champions here in WA who are challenging and changing the ways that our society views the contributions of girls and women. And this year, I would like to congratulate our award winner, Kyla Morrison, Director and Leadership Consultant at The Maverick Effect. Kyla is a significant leader of gender equality here in WA, who has worked with individuals, organisations and across communities to better the lives of girls and women. Kyla is a role model for female leadership as demonstrated by her roles as Director of The Maverick Effect and as the past CEO of Karatha and District's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Kyla creates opportunities for females through the provision of development resources, such as her female leadership podcast that she co-hosts, and as a facilitator of Pilbara Women in Leadership Masterclasses. Kyla is a distinguished mentor for women in the resources sector, paving the path for many females in both Metro and regional WA with her various initiatives. Kyla has also been recognised for her contributions to date, receiving the 2019 Telstra Women's Award and the 2019 WA for Purpose and Social Enterprise Award. I will now hand over to Riaz Mahmood, the General Manager of the Duxton Hotel, to present the award to Kyla Morrison. Thank you. I'm the daughter, the, a granddaughter and a great-granddaughter of some women who were incredible leaders in their homes and in their communities. And it's those everyday role models and some more public role models, including uh, some special men in my life who believed in me before I believed in myself, uh, that have given me the courage and the passion to stand up and um, fight for the things that I believe in, of which um, gender equality and to a certain extent gender equity more so um, is one of my passion areas. I feel incredibly grateful to receive this award to be a, a public role model as well as a role model in my home for gender equality and gender equity. I was very fortunate growing up to have public role models such as Helen Clark who was the first elected female Prime Minister uh, of New Zealand when I was at school. I also interviewed as a school project New Zealand's first female fighter pilot and I still remember looking into the cockpit uh, of the fighter jets thinking that that would be my career until New Zealand decommissioned the jets. And I fell into engineering where I got the opportunity to, um, through that, represent New Zealand at the International Institute of Women in Engineering. And really see firsthand how gender equality is such a, a key priority for uh, making sure that the right decisions are made in the right places. And I'm grateful that this award provides the platform for me to speak at events, on my podcast, in leadership training and in our homes to make sure we see the change uh, that the world needs to see. We are fortunate this year to have had an exceptional piece of artwork donated. Thank you to Ms. Barbara Jean Bermhoff. The painting is titled Isolation. The story inspiring the painting is one of significance. 
Isolation is a narrative of multicultural society in confronting and unprecedented times. The world is facing a common enemy, and yet its citizens show an equivalent disconnection in a deeply isolated space. The painting depicts an emotional glimpse that society faces today and how together we can forge ahead for a better future. An optimistic outlook post COVID-19. This work particularly focuses on SDG 3, building a better future for good health and well-being, SDG 8, decent work and economic growth for everyone, and SDG 4, quality education. The artist, Ms. Barbara Jean Bermhoff, was born in Singapore and is of Irish and Dutch Portuguese descent. Barbara has had several successful exhibitions in Australia and the Middle East. Barbara's art was featured in the book, How AIDS Changed Everything. Among other contributors in that book included Kofi Annan, Anthony Forci, George W. Bush, Elton John, and many more world leaders. Come to our physical event to be able to bid on this exceptional piece of artwork. We would like to thank all of our partners, our executive committee, volunteers, VIP guests, and most importantly, our community for your involvement in marking this momentous occasion. More than ever, the United Nations is in a pivotal seat to make a difference on a global scale by promoting courageous conversations aimed at greater good for all of us. As a non-governmental organisation, non-profit, community-based and volunteer-run organisation, the UNAA's mission is to provide the community, public and private sector and the state and federal government with quality services to assist and promote the United Nations to meet its various objectives. As Dag Hammarskjöld said, it has been said that the United Nations was not created in order to bring us to heaven, but in order to save us from hell. Thank you so much for joining us this year. Now more than ever, Australia needs the UN and the UN needs Australia. Support the UNAA work to create a safer, fairer, more sustainable world by becoming a member, attending one of our events, volunteering or donating to the UNAA today. Thank you. When I think about United Nations, what comes to mind is all the great work that people do and the amount of light that we put on it and the things that we do to bring people together. Um, United Nations affects a lot of people around the world and I'm so glad to be a part of it. I think the Sustainable Development Goals marks a really important milestone for the United Nations and it's been around for a long time and excited to see what comes forward for the next, next 75 years. To me, the United Nations is important for the, to the world because you fight for so many different things at the same time for people who cannot fight for, for their own rights. I've been involved with the UN for quite some time because uh, I used to live in Geneva and did some work with the UN one of the biggest and most important things to the UN is in over the last 75 years how much difference they have made on people's lives. The contributions that the UN has made over the last 75 years have been integral to the development of the modern world as we know it. Uh, the United Nations has always been uh, really symbolic to me and really important and that's why I wanted to join the UNAA. Um, I believe in peace and protecting our environment and moving forward part of the Human Rights Committee for 2020. Our job really is to create awareness of what's the human rights issues in Western Australia. Uh, we may not be able to solve all the issues, but at least bring to light what needs to be uh, portrayed to the, to the public. Join us at the United Nations. Join us at the United Nations. Join us. Yeah, you absolutely should join us on the UN Day. Join us at the United Nations 75th um, Celebration Day. We really look forward to having you there.